Good morning, church, and welcome to SBC. We hope you're doing well this morning, gathered at Addington Road, snuggled up on the sofa at home, or listening to the podcast. Whether this is your first time joining us online, or if you've been here for years, you're so welcome. As usual, after the service, we'll be meeting on Zoom for our foyer discussion, so be ready with a coffee, challenging questions, and a good catch-up. But first, it's time to hand over to my beautiful assistants for this week's SBC News. Hello and welcome to this week's SBC News. I'm Sarah. And I'm Adam. Do you enjoy the sermon unpacked session in the foyer after the service? Do you think of questions to ask after the session is finished and wish you could ask them but are too shy? Or do you have questions after discussing the sermon at your house group? Starting soon, a new podcast where you can ask the ministry team those burning questions you've had since the sermon. Please do not email the ministers directly, but use the form instead. You can find the link in the church news email and they will then answer them on the podcast, which will be available on our website and Spotify. If you've missed the sermon discussions in the foyer, they will now be available on the website and Spotify starting today. Today is Harvest Sunday. If you'd like to give towards this year's Harvest Appeal and don't have online or telephone banking, please note that cheques made up to Open Doors with Brother Andrew can be sent to the address on the screen now and also the church news email. On Tuesday the 13th of October at 7pm, Trevor will be bringing a gospel reflection on Luke chapter 9, 51 to 56, Do You Want Us to Call Down Fire? And on Thursday the 8th of October, join us for the next episode of SBC Chat, where Martin catches up with someone from our SBC family. It's election time. No, not the US election, but our SBC leadership election. We have three vacancies on the diaconate next year and need all you church members to play your part in the process. Please read prayerfully through Trevor's recent letter and the list of names and ask God to show you those who have the character and abilities to serve as deacons. Ask another member whose opinion you trust to second your choices and then ask those you think can be deacons if they're willing to stand. If they agree, fill in the nomination form as much as you can whilst also following present restrictions and return it to Teresa. Kathleen Maddox is happy to collect from your home if you can't get out. If you can't collect the other signatures, those, con- those concerned can email their consent to Kathleen too. Any questions, please call Teresa or Trevor. Please do your best to take action. Don't leave it to others. And finally, another insight is on the horizon. The deadline for the November issue is Wednesday the 21st of October and the magazine will be distributed by email on Thursday the 29th of October. Please send your contributions to the email address shown on the screen now or call Eleanor at home, details in the church directory. Regretfully, late articles cannot be included. This has been SBC News. God God bless. bless! Welcome to SBC Church Online. Um, Today we are celebrating harvest. Um, As you remember, normally we gather in church and bring all our goods together. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that. Um, But what we are able to do is to go and visit various places around Selsden. The charities that we're supporting this year are Open Doors, Food Bank and also Food Stock. Um, During the service today, I'm going to be giving more information about how you can support these charities. Um, Yeah, so I'm just going to pop my shoes on. And as I make my way to these various places, let's gather together to worship our Lord.
Before we get to where we're aiming to be, I just want to share a bit more information about the charities that we're supporting as part of our harvest service. Uh, the first charity is um, food banks. Uh, food banks have, have been a, an amazing way of serving our community. Uh, I've seen stats that indicate that we are giving away one food package every minute at the minute through this pandemic that we're suffering. Um, to support this charity, you are able to um, go to Sainsbury's, they have a basket, or contact them directly. We're also supporting Open Doors as an international charity. They aim to support those Christians that are being oppressed from certain areas. Um, this is magnified again because of Covid, that now there is starvation as well as, as pressures to, uh, to move away from Jesus. I now have a short video that will just give a bit more insight to what's happening at Open Doors. अच्छा क्या काम करते हैं मैं यही बिहारी सब्जी उब्जी में जाता तो भी बंद है अच्छा आपके घर में कितने लोग हैं परिवार में मैं तो है आठ परिवार अच्छा 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 हां बहुत दुखा है आपके पास अभी राशन है नहीं नहीं राशन रहता तो मैं पास करके फोन ही करता बहुत दुखा है चलिए ठीक है बहन हम आपके लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं और मैं कोशिश करता हूं कि क्या हो सकता कल हम आपके लिए कुछ इंतजाम करेंगे ठीक है ठीक है कोई दूसरा लोग राशन लेके नहीं पहुंचे आपके पास कोई नहीं पहुंचा है राशन लेके कोई नहीं सारे जुगिए इधर दे देता है मेरे मालले नहीं आता है अच्छा आपके मोहल्ले में क्यों नहीं आता है कोई नहीं आता है कोई नहीं मेरे मेरे बेरे के लोग तरस रहा है रोटी बेगर ओहो कितना घर होगा आपके उधर इधर नौ 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 घर आएगा नौ जुगी है सब विश्वासी है सब विश्वासी है अच्छा अच्छा The third charity we are going to go and visit. We are going to St Francis on Monks Hill to find out more about their food stock. Um, hello Michelle. Hi. Hi. Um, so, would you be able to explain a bit of what food stock is and how it all works? For okay, us? sure. Um, the food stock is a bit, it's different from a food bank in the sense that we, um, people are charged money to come um, and sometimes we let people not pay because they really can't afford it but basically it's time to give people a hand up rather than a hand out. So people pay £3.50 and get approximately um, £20 or more worth of food. And that includes um, meat or vegetarian alternative um, and um, stuff in the fridge, um, you know, cheese and uh, milk, um, fresh fruit and vegetables. Um, and we work, and it's like a, it, is like a, it is like a shop. People come in, they pay their three pound fifty, um, and then they go into the shop, and um, they um, can choose um, one sort of high value item, and then um, some other items, um, and then something, some meat, and some other things from the um, fresh fruit and veg and things like that. So that's how it differs from a, um, a food bank in that people are actually choosing their own, whereas in the food bank, I think you just you're given. Mm -hmm. um, um, the stuff. You, um, we're also saying that there's actually another side to this. So we are serving the community and those yeah. that are struggling. But then at the other end, you were saying something about food waste and. Yeah. So what happens is um, you've probably seen on television because of COVID, the organisation Fair Share, um, and we get most of our food from them. And what it is, they collect from supermarkets and um, food producers. 
food that would otherwise go to waste. So it's um, like meat that's got a very short sell-by date, um, or use-by date, um, and um, products that might be past their best. So they, are, they reuse um, all those, they give it to different organisations like ourselves. Um, so it helps kind of um, to, to be a good use of our resources here on Earth, um, yeah. for things not to be wasted. Yeah. Um, our, in our church email, we'll be sending out information of how we can support you um, bringing items. I know um, money towards fresh items is also important. But is there anything that the church could pray into for you? Is there any kind of areas that you, you would like us to pray as SBC? Yeah, okay, I think we want to meet people's needs, not only their um, physical needs for food, um, but also, um, you know, obviously for God's kingdom to come here in Monks Hill um, and the surrounding area. So um, for us to be able to show God's love um, to um, the, other, the people that we meet at the food stop, that we can um, see their lives transformed by, by the Lord, really. So, That's yeah. really cool. Well, thank you very much, Michelle, for giving your time. That's okay. And um, if anybody would like to support them, just have a look on our church email. It's good to be back together to give God some praise and some worship. Truly, he's deserving of the praise. Um, so let us bless his name. Every blessing that he pours out, we're going to turn it right back in praise. So just join in and give him that praise that he deserves. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name.
let's just take some time now to just bless the Lord with all our soul, with everything within us. Let us bless his holy name, for he is a good God, he's a merciful God, he's a kind God, he's a loving God, he's a forgiving God, hallelujah, he's a providing God, he's a place of safety, he's a place of refuge, he's a place of comfort, whatever you need him to be today, just bless his name and be assured that he will be what you need him to be. from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verses 9 to 14. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Um, good morning. Um, I'm Martin. I am the the trainee minister at Selsden Baptist Church. Um, some of you might not know, um, but my little girl has recently started a year reception. It's been a strange time of new things. Um, we've had the mad rush trying to get to school on time. We've had the, the they're trying to understand what phonics are. Uh, the occasional disagreement on what she wants to wear to what she should be wearing. Um, actually, the cutest thing happened on the first Friday of school. I'm there, stood at the end of the day, um, waiting for her to come out of the class. And she bursts out of this room and starts running towards me. But do you know that running where the arms go really quick, but she doesn't actually move any quicker? Anyway, she, that, that, she comes running at me and she starts shouting, Dad, I've got two days off. I can stay at home for two whole days. It was really cute, but it was one of those embarrassing moments that we have to deal with. Anyway, um, another thing has begun to happen in our house now that we're all back at school. And it's that the artwork is coming home. It's handed to me from Essie in pride. And she looks at me for, for approval uh, and maybe a critique of her work? I don't know. I'm not sure that's true. Anyway, I, as um, all parents, uh, pretend to know what it is. Um, there's this splodge of green that could be a person or it could be a tree. There's this, do you know the brown where you can only create this brown if you mix all the paints together? That's splodged all over it and created all over it. Anyway, this complex picture that only my daughter understands. So, as she does, she looks at her father, knowing but he's completely perplexed by this painting. She takes it back and she explains this piece of art to me. Then, we stick it on the fridge. With, with yesterday's art and the day before, all of these pictures, different, all unique, and there is loads of them now, I'm not entirely sure, I can get into the fridge. I'm sure a lot of parents and grandparents and anybody has experienced the same. And if we're honest, this experience of, of a small child sharing something that they've created has, has this kind of magical feel to it. I don't think magical's right. Maybe spiritual? 
Suppose my grandma would say it warms her heart. Of seeing a child's joy of creation. Of sort of sharing in it. I reckon this is something in our lives that will never go away. From a small child creating art to an adult creating, I don't know, some music or, or creating a really nice Excel sheet. Maybe mowing a lawn, um, creating a beautiful family or maybe an Ikea flat pack. Now I deny anybody that doesn't put together one of these, these flat packs and then call everybody in their house to come and admire it. I deny anybody who, when they're walking past this cabinet that they've created, they don't stop to admire it and have this strange sense of satisfaction with them in the skills that they've used to, to create this something new. All of these things, without a doubt, involve toil, but they also create satisfaction. This creative work, this, this toil to create something, uh, has been floating around in my head for, for quite a while, to be honest with you. And it's got me wondering whether God had to toil. I wonder if, if, I wonder the, if this effort, if this willingness to give our time and energy to create something was drawn from God. I wonder if it's a characteristic of God that when he breathed into us, when he breathed into us, we inherited this capability of creativity. Can we just have a look at Genesis 1? If you've got your Bibles, go and grab them. That'd be great. I wonder whether when you look at Genesis 1, whether you, when you look at this passage, if you see toil, I wonder if you see creativity. Do you see passion? Can you see the heart of God in the creation story? Or do you just see our God going through the motions to build something? I believe sometimes we get stuck in the how of the creation story that we miss the why. A guy called Willard um, suggests that the creation, the creation story, was an act of joy. That just like my daughter, day after day, in love with her creation, so is God. That just like the joy she shares with us, with me, God's creation is an act of joy, to create joy, to share with us all. In Genesis 1, over and over again, God creates, he toils in some sense, and then stands back and says it's good. And he does this over and over again. Then in the end, he stops. He looks and says, it's very good. Or a better translation could possibly be, it's amazing, or it's spectacular stupendous maybe just wow look at it the creation of all we see and touch is an act of joy god is way beyond manuals sticking to rules he, dem he demonstrates his creativity in this story he demonstrates it also in us this creation story which continues even now. God's creation was not put together and then left, but rather God continues to create and we're partners in it. I just want to, let me say that one more time. The creation story continues even now and God continues his creation and we are partners in this. We have been given so much from the places we live uh, to the tools we have to create with him. That with God, we can toil and create things that bring happiness, that bring goodness, that bring satisfaction. God has blessed us massively 
in ways we can't understand. And a harvest is an opportunity for us to, to see it, to stop and look. I imagine many of us have started growing veg during lockdown, during this season. But I wonder if you thought it was an individual task. I wonder that when you planted that seed, when you watered it, when the growth appeared and when you took harvest, I wonder whether you realised that God was your partner in all of this. I wonder if um, people consider their jobs to be an individual task. I wonder whether when you make decisions, make friendships, whether you create something new, get promoted, or when you take your wages home, I wonder if you consider God to be with you, to be in partnership with you in your jobs. Harvest for some has been seen as a time to be thankful for what we have and then to give to those that don't have as much or are suffering. Which is okay, but I wonder if there's more to it. Let me suggest this. I came across this term that I really like. Um, I'm, I'm studying theology at the minute and to be honest, a lot of the words are massive and I, I sort of struggle as we all do. But there's a guy called Markham who describes God when looking at the creation story. He describes him as roomy. God as roomy. God is roomy. I love the picture that this paints. This creative God working, pulling everything together, making room, making space, being hospitable. When God creates, he creates room for himself. He creates room for us. He creates room for all of creation. If we look at the creation God has made as a place of a place that's roomy, a place that, that has creativity in it and also welcome, that these gifts are for us. When we give gifts to others, when we donate to certain places, we are the same adding to this creation. We are supporting free charities today. We are supporting the food stock, the food bank and open doors. And I'd love you to prayerfully consider being part of their journey. But not as an act of thankfulness for what God has done for you, but as an act of creativity, joining in God's creation story. The money, food or time you give is in partnership with God to continue this story. When you give, you are using your toil and creativity you are using this for happiness and good for others. That when you give, you are using your toil and creativity to make satisfaction for others. That as you give, you create room for others, just as God made room for all of us. I just have one more thing to say. In the passage from today, it says that we have eternity in our hearts, but we can't fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. I want to suggest that that doesn't exclude us. That doesn't exclude us from the movement from the beginning to the end. That doesn't exclude us from God's creation story. That although we are not able to see it, we are in our own way able to step into this creation and invite others into this roomy God which is open for all. Why not look at God's creation? Why not admit that you don't fully understand it? 
Why not, as I did with my daughter, enjoy the spiritual depth. Enjoy the joy of his creativity. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are a creative God. Thank you that this whole place is created through your joy. Lord, let us see it more and more. Let us be stirred to join this. Lord, as you breathed in your compassion, your creativity, let us breathe it out and join you in building your kingdom here. Amen. Thank you for joining for our online service. Um, please don't forget that we have uh, the foyer after this where we can discuss some of the things that came up in the service. Um, please prayerfully consider supporting the charities that were mentioned and have a blessed week.